Tonight, we pick up our Bible study on the wisdom of Proverbs as we seek to learn and and grow in our life from the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and insight of King Solomon. We pick up uh, about midway through chapter 14 of Proverbs as we read from the Holman Christian Standard Bible on verse 23 of chapter 14. There's profit in all hard work, but endless talk leads only to poverty. Uh, we just break this down for, for what it is. Sometimes uh, the words of the Bible ex- explain themselves. Uh, profit in, in all hard work. Uh, the old saying, uh, nothing comes for free. You have to work hard to gain uh, what you want and what you need. Um, there is profit in hard work. You get rewarded for your work. But endless talk leads only to poverty. If, if you just, if you have an idea, say, for a business, and it's a great idea, but all you ever do is talk about this idea and how you would, would like to see this happen, but never do anything about it, uh, the Bible says then only leads to poverty. If that is the way of life that you're seeking, um, there must be work involved uh, to, to bring uh, the dream of, of maybe your dream job to fruition, to the actuality of, of having a life uh, that is supported by it. Verse 24, the crown of the wise is their wealth, but the foolishness of fools produces foolishness. The, the crown of the wise is their wealth. Um, we have been learning throughout Proverbs that uh, the ways of wisdom are going to help us grow in understanding and knowledge, which all leads to being successful, uh, not just in a personal life, but in a, uh, uh, a way such as here it says, uh, it, the crown of the wise is their wealth. Uh, a wise business owner is going to be profitable. They're going to make the right decisions. Uh, but the foolishness of fools produces foolishness. Um, pretty much tells you right there, uh, the foolish ways are not going to be desirable. A truthful witness, verse 25, rescues lives. The one who utters lies is deceitful. Uh, Pretty much just a way of, of saying the truth is the way to go. Um, lying is, is deceitful. It's not going to bring about uh, an outcome that is favorable. Um, the lie is always going to be found out one day down the road. And let's say it doesn't. You still are living with that. And you're living under the shell of knowing uh, now you've got to protect yourself from that. Um, it's better to be truthful. Um, it says a truthful witness rescues lives. It may be your own life of not living in the shell of deceit that uh, allows you the freedom uh, to be a successful person in life. In the fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children have a refuge. Now, once again, we've, we've spoken before, there is a fear of the Lord if you are on the path that is deceitful and lying and, and wicked. There is a fear of the Lord that you should have in judgment. But there is also a fear of the Lord, as I believe the King, uh, King Solomon is speaking of here. The fear of the Lord, one has strong confidence and his children have a refuge is a respect for uh, understanding God in his almighty power. Uh, fear here is more related to respect uh, and knowing and abiding in that confidence in the Lord. Verse 27, the fear of the Lord is a foundation of life, turning, turning people away from the snares of death. Once again, this fear of the Lord as a foundation of life is, yes, we need to be aware of, of the eternal punishment for disobedience 
and not following the ways of the Lord. But once again, this fear of the Lord is a foundation of life. Um, It's a respectful attitude in understanding the almighty power of God and having a respect for that. Uh, It turns people away from the snares of death because the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that is gained in this, this fear or respect of the Lord gives you the mindset to understand that uh, if I do not take this respect for God, this fear of the Lord, and apply it in my life as he is almighty and will one day judge all people, um, this fear, this fear, this knowledge, this wisdom and understanding that is the basis and foundation of this uh, respect turns people away from the snares of death. Verse 28, a large population is a king's splendor, but a shortage of people is a ruler's devastation. Uh, Obviously, a king with no people has no kingdom. A patient person shows great understanding, but a quick-tempered one promotes foolishness. Um, We've all heard about don't make any quick decisions. Think about it. Uh, See if you feel the same way tomorrow. Make the decision then. Uh, Show a little patience. Great understanding, but a a quick-tempered one. A lot of times we make quick, harsh decisions. We regret that. So... Once again, verse 29, a patient person shows great understanding, but a quick-tempered one promotes foolishness. Verse 30, a tranquil heart is life to the body, but a jealousy is rottenness to the bones. Tranquil uh, promotes a a peace, a tranquil peace. You have a peaceful heart. A tranquil heart uh, is life is such a good comfort um, and having that peace in your soul that uh, the Bible teaches us that peace. Jesus says he gives you that peace. But a but jealousy is rottenness to the bones. Jealousy promotes anxiety and fear and worry. And the Bible teaches us these things will lead to uh, problems in life that uh, we need to, uh, as the Bible will teach us, uh, give these things to the Lord and trust in him to see us through. Verse 31, the one who oppresses the poor person insults his maker, but the one who is kind to the needy honors him. All through the Bible, uh, we're being taught to to be kind to the poor, to look after their needs. Um, a good story comes to mind, the, the story of the Good Samaritan. Um, being kind to those in need, the one who oppresses them insults God, is what, it, what we're saying here, insults his maker. Uh, so God is very uh, forthcoming and and letting us know that as he came to to take care of our needs for us and does so every day, we should not uh, oppress others in their time of need. We should be respectful and follow as God has done for us. We should also do for others to honor him. Verse 32, the wicked one is thrown down by his own sin, but the righteous one has a refuge in his death. The wicked one is thrown down by his own sin, but the righteous one has a refuge in his death. That just reminds me of the most popular verse in the Bible, John three sixteen, the most memorized, the most known, quoted verse, John three sixteen, but also There's so much more if we go just a little bit past John 3.16. And I want to read here from the New King James Version, John 3.16. And 
I want to go on through verse 21 to show how, uh, as we see in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 32, the wicked one is thrown down by his own sin, but the righteous one has a refuge in his death. So think about those words as I read in John chapter 3 from the New King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, starting there at verse 16, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We're starting to see here about the wicked one is thrown down in his own sins, but the righteous one has refuge in his death. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation. Here we go that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So that, that freedom, that salvation in Christ is the refuge in physical death to eternal life. But the wicked one is thrown down and cast out because of his own sin. Verse 33 of Proverbs chapter 14, back in the Holman Christian Standard Bible, wisdom resides in the heart of the discerning. She is known even among fools. So, Wisdom is not something that God only presents to those who are, uh, in this case, verse 33, in the heart of the discerning. But the Bible teaches us that she is known even among fools. Even those who make the wrong decisions are given the opportunity to seek wisdom, to find wisdom. But the choices they make are those of, of what the Bible is teaching us here in, in folly and foolishness. So wisdom is known even among fools, but it's the choices that you make in seeking it or not seeking it. Verse 34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Pretty self-explanatory there. Verse 35, a king favors a wise servant, but his anger falls on a disgraceful one. Uh, a king favors a wise servant. What are we seeking in this Bible study in Proverbs? To gain the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, insight from King Solomon as God has blessed him. A king favors a wise servant. If we're seeking this wisdom, uh, our king, our God, is going to see favor on us because we're making wise decisions in his eyes. But his anger falls on a disgraceful one. We've already just read the, the condemnation is described in John chapter 3, verse 19. So let us all seek the wisdom that God presents to us as even the fool is presented the, the, the opportunity for wisdom, but the choices made are not to seek it. Let, it's all, let us all seek wisdom in God's eyes in the favor of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, from this day forward, that our lives would be pleasing to God and our striving ways to do so. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for giving us the opportunity for wisdom, even when we make the wrong decisions. But Lord, you are faithful, you are kind, you are just, and you will continue to present us with the opportunities to make the choice to follow you. 
We ask, Lord, that through this Bible study and today that you would open our eyes, our hearts, our minds to following you, that you would help us take that step and then you would show us the rewards that you have for us to be encouraging that we would take another and another and another step in the ways of your eyes, Lord, in seeking the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and insight as we're doing so in this Bible study. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.